Hi guys, it's me JB with a video. Uh, I'll tell you where I've been uh, shortly as regards not the lack of videos and that, but uh, I'm sure you have guessed. Uh, I am very busy at the moment working, as you all know. Uh, I've just popped on really to give my opinions, a quick opinion really, on Jose Mourinho taking over from Mauricio Pochettino. Been all a bit whirlwind. I didn't see this coming actually uh, 24 hours ago, and then I checked my news feed last night and. Uh, uh, and it was buzzing with rumours that, uh, I mean, it came out the way. I know Spurs haven't had a good start to the season and that. Uh, and believe me, I covered one of their worst performances in the Champions League on the channel when uh, Bayern Munich came to the Tottenham, Tottenham Stadium and won 7-2. Um, and again, a game that's noted for Sergio Avery scoring four goals for Arsenal play. Um, I honestly think he's been shafted. That is my personal opinion. As an outsider looking in, as a neutral looking in, I think it's. I think he had his. I think he had a. I think he was in a, a financial straitjacket. Um, the chairman or the owner, Daniel Levy, for whatever reason, uh, decided not to trust Pochettino to buy players or get players in. I know they've just moved into this new stadium. It's cost them a lot of money, but that's not an excuse. I think Daniel Levy could have been a lot better towards Mauricio Pochettino. I mean, let's look at it over the face of five years, shall we? He's been in charge for five years, right? Five and a half years. In four out of those five years, he got them into the Champions League four years in a row. Could have won the league in 2016, but obviously that Leicester team, um, which was just so good, um, it's got to be said, uh, that was... The team, the team that won the league, but uh, was just unbelievable. Um, so he could have won it then. It just so happens that Leicester had this remarkable run and they won the league. But that, but having said that, that's not that's not the reason why he's lost his job. I mean, I thought tactically he was very good. You know, he was good for Spurs. You know, he did what he had to do. He brought in talent like Harry Winks and of course Harry Kane, who's now become England's skipper. Um, you know, so he's brought in a lot of the youngsters. You know, he's always bought well when he's had money to spend. He's always fought out his signings cleverly. Now, I honestly think he should have had another year to prove his medal. Now, whether Daniel Levy has been doing stuff behind his back, we can't be sure. But there's some means. But, but it sounds as if, if rumours are to be believed, and I can't really predict whether there were rumours or not, or whether they were actual whether there were actual things going on behind the scenes, I don't know, because, you know, obviously we're not party to all this sort of thing. <coughs> Excuse me. I think there's been... I think there's been a plot to get rid of Pochettino. I know the form hasn't been great, and a, bit, a, lot, of, a lot of astute statistical boffins will say, well, statistically, he had to go. But was he... Was he but was he given enough chance to turn it around? I don't think he was. I still think there was plenty of time left in the season for Tottenham to turn it around and get into the top four. I don't think they're going to win the Premier League. Not the way Liverpool or uh, Chelsea or Manchester City are playing right now, but uh, well, to a certain extent, Leicester as well. They're on a good season. They're on a good run. Um, so you look at it and you think, I think he should have been given at least another until the end of the season. Now, there's obviously been a plot to get rid of him because, uh, according to rumours, Daniel Levy has been in consultations or has been in negotiations with Jose Mourinho for three weeks, uh, if, if rumours are to be believed. Um, now, Jose, uh, it, was certainly no, it was certainly no coincidence that Mourinho got the job this morning. Um, the interesting part is that Daniel Levy never gave Pochettino any money to spend. Uh, in his five and a half years at Tottenham, he got sweet FA basically. And the thing is, Mourinho's the sort of manager, and obviously Manchester United fans will probably testify, Chelsea fans, Real Madrid, Inter Milan, that he, they had, he had money to spend at all those clubs and more. He was the guy that forked out £89 million for Paul Pogba when, it, when he was at Manchester United. So the man. Enjoy enough. There's nothing Mourinho enjoys more than, apart from winning, he's spending money. Um, I don't think he's. 
I'm surprised he's taking the Spurs job considering Levy is very tight fisted with his money. Uh, unless unless he's forced jo uh, unless he's forced um, Daniel Levy's hand as regards buying player, as regards budgets, uh, that's the only other reason that he's got the job. That's the only reason I could possibly think of that he's got the job. Um, but I think it's wrong to go interviewing for a, a, a job that's already, which at the time was already occupied by another, another person, I, Petri, in, in brackets, Pochettino. I think it's wrong. I just think, I think Spurs might pay for that. I understand, Marie, listen, Mourinho is a serial winner, right? There's no getting away from it. He can be great. But he, he, the only thing, the only problem I've got with Jose Mourinho is he's had money to spend. He's never tried to win a championship or a Champions League, for that matter, a cup, on a, a relatively no, low budget. He's always had masses of money to spend. He had the Glazers at Manchester United. He had um, Real Madrid. They have, they've got a president who's got bags of money. Uh, Abramovich at Chelsea. All the, you know, he had money at all those clubs. And you just think... Could he be a guy out of his, really out of his depth here? I think it's a brave decision. You know, Daniel Romero is prepared to gamble. Mourinho's been out of work since, he's been out of work for over a year, so he's so he's probably been itching to get back into it. Although I would have thought he might have gone to Arsenal because he's been around at the Emirates quite a lot watching football there. Uh, you know, I don't think he'll be welcome back at Arsenal in a hurry now. He's taken over there. Um, they're deadly rivals, but uh, it's an odd one. Uh, but uh, let's look at Pochettino's record. It's a great record. Four top four finishes, I think including one second place, and a Champions League final. I think for Tottenham, I think that's a fantastic... I think that's that's consistently... Yes, he didn't win a trophy, and people will say, well, he didn't win a trophy. So what? He didn't win a trophy. But he probably played the best... He probably had... You know, but he played attacking football. He played entertaining football. His teams were good attacking football. Teams were good in attacks and, and things like that. You just look at the comeback again. And also they could... And the good the, the good thing about it was... When... When... Um, excuse me. When... Uh, when they needed them when they needed a miracle in that semi-final against Dykes and they were trailing, I think, in the semi-final second leg, they came back and scored three goals, which got them into the final in the first place. But I sometimes think this was that the undoing, really, because once they qualified for the Champions League final, their form seemed to tell. Uh, of course, I covered them in the Champions League final against Liverpool, where they were... Of course, they were soundly beaten. It was inevitable, but... Um, Obviously, the league form has dipped, you know. But I think the way Daniel Levy has treated him, Richard Pochettino in this particular instance, I think he's disgraceful. I think it's disrespectful to a man that's given five and a half years hard work and dedication to the job. And I just think that Daniel Levy, or Levy, or whatever he's called, I think he's just ripped the, ripped the absolute Michael out of him. He's given him sweet effect to spend in terms of budgets and transfer funds. He's and now he's gone and done the ultimate backstabbing act and stabbed him in the back, sacked him, and then brought in Mourinho not eight hours later. I think it's not on. I wish Mourinho well. It's good to have him back in the game, but it's a very, very sad day when someone else loses his job because of it. Uh, now I, I do get it. It's probably not Jose Mourinho's fault. It's Daniel Levy who's engineered the whole thing, uh, from my knowledge. Um, but reading into that what you will, but it's uh, been a very, very interesting last 24 hours in the world of football. Uh, that is for sure. As for me, um, I've been I've been working, of course. Um, that's why you've not seen much of me on there. Obviously, uh, a lot of the time has been taken up trying to re-edit the latest episode of the Premiership. Of course, you heard me do some cricket commentary the other day. It's nice to, some of you enjoyed the live cricket commentary. I'll keep that coming uh, over the next few days. Um, also, also tomorrow, don't expect anything from me tomorrow because I'm going to be very, very busy busy elsewhere. I'm going to be up in Manchester celebrating a friend's birthday. Uh, so I'm going to be 
I'm going to be up there tomorrow night and coming back Friday, so I'm going to be uh, massively busy. And, and uh, unless there's any football stories that break when I'm over there, I'll go back to my hotel room afterwards and and get my own, do my opinions off my uh, off my mobile. Uh, but uh, um, but uh, as far as um, videos can concern, no commentaries this weekend because I'm going to be doing my day job this weekend, so there'll be no commentating. I don't know whether there'll be a Monday game. In fact, I'll better check actually if there is a Monday game because if there is a Monday game, I'll endeavour to cover it for you. So just bear with me. Um, yeah, so I'm. Yeah, it's been that sort of. Uh, Week in the football world, is not it? Um, um, let me just quickly go on to BBC. If it would load up. And we'll see what Premier League fixtures have got up. Because if there's a Monday night fixture, I'll, I'll be commentating on it. Um... um this... Um, so we won't be doing Jose Mourinho's first match. Um, so let's have a look. I doubt there's a Monday night fixture, so we might not be doing any football this weekend. I hope so, anyway. Oh, there's there's a game on at tw on the 25th at 8 o'clock, so we'll be at Villa Park. The next commentary I can confirm will be coming from Villa Park, Birmingham. So it'll be Aston Villa uh, take on... Um, they're taking on Newcastle United so that's it's not the biggest game in the world but it is a big game in terms of um, the relegation because there are two teams fighting at the bottom so that'll be our next live commentary game Aston Villa versus Newcastle United um, I hope you can join me uh, at uh, 10 to 8 on Monday night for that one uh, but uh, yeah I'm, I'm just about recovered from a cold uh, coughing and sputtering everywhere I'll keep up the live cricket commentaries and of course I'll be Cricket 19 commentaries, also the Premiership as well. I'll try and do as much as I can, uh, but you've got to you got to stick with me because of the because uh, of all the commitments and stuff. And I'm celebrating a friend's birthday tomorrow, so I'm having a relaxation. It's my way of relaxation tomorrow night, so I'm going to enjoy myself tomorrow night. Right, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your evening. I'll see you very soon. For me, JB, take care. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.